We rode bikes for a while and we played on the trampoline. Then we made some water balloons and threw them at the neighborhood girls, but we missed. Jeremy's mom made us lunch. After lunch, we went over to my house. It was strange, but I was kind of having fun with my enemy. He almost seemed nice. But of course I couldn't tell Dad that since he worked so hard making enemy pie. Jeremy Ross liked my basketball hoop. He said he wished he had a basketball hoop, but they didn't have room for one. I let him run the game just to be nice. Jeremy Ross knew how to throw a boomerang. He threw it and it came right back to him. I threw it and it went over my house and into the backyard. We climbed over the fence to find it. The first thing Jeremy noticed was my treehouse. My treehouse was my treehouse. I was the boss. If my sister wanted in, I didn't have to let her. If my dad wanted in, I didn't have to let him. And if Jeremy wanted in, can we go in it, he asked. Oh, I knew he was going to ask me that, but he was the top person. The only person on my enemy list. And enemies aren't allowed in my treehouse. But he did teach me how to throw a boomerang. And he did have me over for lunch. And he did let me play on his trampoline. He wasn't being a very good enemy. Okay, I said, but hold on. I climbed up ahead of him and tore that enemy list off the wall. I had a checkerboard and some cards in the treehouse, and we played games until my dad called us down for dinner. We pretended we didn't hear him, and when he came out to get us, we tried to hide from him, but somehow he found us. Dad made us macaroni and cheese for dinner, my favorite. It was Jeremy's favorite, too. Maybe Jeremy Ross wasn't so bad after all. I was beginning to think that maybe we should just forget about enemy pie. But sure enough, after dinner, Dad brought out the pie. I watched as he cut the pie into eight thick slices. Dad, I said, it's sure nice having a new friend in the neighborhood. I was trying to get his attention, trying to tell him that Jeremy Ross was no longer my enemy. But Dad only smiled and nodded. I think he thought I was just pretending. Dad dished us up three plates, side by side, with big pieces of pie and giant scoops of ice cream. He passed one to me and one to Jeremy. Wow, Jeremy said, looking at the pie. My dad never makes pies like this. It was at this point I panicked. I didn't want Jeremy to eat the enemy pie. He was my friend. I couldn't let him eat it. Jeremy, don't eat it. It's bad pie. I think it's poisonous or something. Jeremy's fork stopped right before it reached his mouth. He crumpled his eyebrows and looked at me funny. I felt relief. I saved his life. I was a hero. If it's so bad, Jeremy asked, then why has your dad already eaten half of it? I turned and looked at my dad. Sure enough, he was eating enemy pie. Good stuff, he mumbled through a mouthful. And that was all he said. I sat there watching them eat enemy pie for a few seconds. Dad was laughing. Jeremy was happily eating, and neither of them was losing their hair. It seemed safe enough, so I took a tiny taste. Enemy pie was delicious. After dessert, Jeremy rode his bike home, but not before inviting me over to play on his trampoline in the morning. He said he'd teach me how to flip. As for enemy pie, I still don't know how to make it. I still wonder if enemies really do hate it, or if their hair falls out, or if their breath turns bad. But I don't know if I'll ever get an answer because I just lost my best enemy. And that's the end of the book. I wonder if each class could put together a recipe for their own enemy pie, something that they think would have the same effect. I don't know. Thanks for listening.